Welcome to my channel, American Report. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. For decades, the skies have been dominated by a powerful duopoly, America's Boeing and Europe's Airbus. These two aerospace titans have shaped not just the way we travel, but the very nature of global aviation itself, setting the standards for safety, efficiency, and innovation. Step onto a modern jet, and odds are it's from one of these two giants. Whether you're flying across continents or just hopping between cities, their aircraft are the backbone of commercial air travel, carrying millions of passengers every single day. They design, build, and sell most of the world's commercial aircraft, from the workhorse Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 to the cutting-edge 787 Dreamliner and A350. Their fleets connect cities, countries, and continents, making the world feel smaller and more accessible. Their influence stretches far beyond the runway, shaping airline strategies, government decisions, and even international trade policies. The choices these companies make ripple through the entire aviation industry. This dominance is the result of decades of relentless innovation, massive investment, and the consolidation of legendary aviation names. Their histories are filled with engineering breakthroughs and fierce competition, each pushing the other to new heights. Boeing and Airbus have built vast global supply chains and support networks, creating high barriers for any would-be competitor. Their reach extends to every corner of the globe, from manufacturing to maintenance. Challenging this duopoly isn't just about building a good plane, it's about replicating an entire industrial ecosystem, with thousands of suppliers, skilled engineers, and decades of expertise. Yet a new contender is emerging from the East, China's state-owned COMAC, with a bold ambition to break the duopoly and claim a place among the world's aviation elite. Backed by China's vast resources, government support, and a massive domestic market, COMAC is building more than planes. It's building a national dream, aiming to transform China into a true aerospace powerhouse. Its rise is forcing the industry's giants to look over their shoulders, as the balance of power in the skies may be about to shift in ways the world has never seen before. Founded in 2008, COMAC's mission is clear design and build large passenger jets that can compete globally. Its first major project, the C919, entered service in 2023, but the real game-changer is the upcoming C929 wide-body jet. The C929 is designed to challenge the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 aircraft that connect continents. By targeting this market, COMAC signals its intent to become a global player, not just a domestic supplier. A prototype exists, but the first flight is years away. Developing a wide-body jet is a marathon, demanding mastery of advanced materials and systems. With China's airlines projected to need thousands of new aircraft, COMAC has a built-in customer base to sustain the C929's early years. This domestic launchpad could fundamentally alter the global aviation landscape. At the heart of the C929 project is China's most ambitious goal, a domestically produced jet engine. For decades, high-bypass turbofan engines have been the domain of Western giants like GE, Pratt & Whitney, and Rolls-Royce. For China, mastering this technology is about sovereignty and strategic independence. The C929's planned CJ2000 engine is a direct response to the risks of relying on foreign suppliers, risks made clear by past export controls and sanctions. Developing a reliable, efficient engine is a monumental challenge, but it's essential for China to control its aviation destiny. The first CJ2000s may lag behind Western rivals, but they mark a crucial step towards self-sufficiency. For China, building and flying its own long-haul jet with its own engine is both a symbol and a safeguard. COMAC's reliance on foreign technology is a vulnerability, as seen with the C919. A 2025 report revealed the C919 depends on dozens of US and European suppliers, especially for its leap engine from CFM International. This dependency leaves COMAC exposed to trade tensions and export controls, which have threatened to halt production. The C929 was conceived to be sanction-proof, with a domestic engine and local suppliers for critical systems. This strategy prioritizes security and control over pure efficiency, challenging the globalized model perfected by Boeing and Airbus. COMAC's approach is a geopolitical statement. China intends to chart its own course, free from Western constraints. The C929 is more than an aircraft. It's a declaration of technological independence. 
Building a commercial jet engine from scratch is one of engineering's greatest challenges. Wide-body engines are marvels of material science, with thousands of parts operating under extreme conditions. The technology is closely guarded, with Western nations reluctant to share secrets due to military applications. This has led to accusations of espionage and deepened mistrust. Proving a new engine's safety and reliability requires years of testing and billions in investment. Even if China succeeds, the first CJ2000s will likely trail Western engines in efficiency and reliability, a tough sell for airlines obsessed with cost. Comac faces a dilemma launch with a less competitive domestic engine for security, or use Western engines and risk dependency. The current plan is to offer both, but the ultimate goal is a truly Chinese-powered jet. Comac's approach with the C929 marks a bold departure from the strategies of Boeing and Airbus, the two dominant forces in global aviation. While the Western incumbents have decades of experience and a vast international presence, Comac is positioning itself as a challenger with a distinctly different philosophy. The Western giants source components from all over the world, carefully optimizing for both performance and cost. This global approach has allowed them to push the boundaries of technology and efficiency, but it also creates intricate, sometimes fragile supply chains that can be disrupted by geopolitical tensions or logistical bottlenecks. In contrast, Comac is pivoting toward vertical integration and relying heavily on domestic suppliers. This means more of the aircraft is designed, built and assembled within China's borders, prioritizing national sovereignty and self-reliance over immediate technical excellence or speed. The ultimate goal is ambitious, to build a truly Chinese aircraft with a supply chain that is also Chinese, even if that means slower progress and a steeper learning curve in the early years. This state-led strategy is less about chasing quick profits, and more about building long-term capability and independence for China's aviation industry, ensuring that future generations can innovate without relying on foreign technology. Boeing and Airbus, with their global networks, can often innovate and scale quickly by tapping into the best suppliers worldwide. However, these same networks are vulnerable to sudden disruptions, as seen during recent global crises. COMAX model offers greater control and resilience, giving China more autonomy over its aviation future, but this comes with significant initial risks and the challenge of proving reliability in a market dominated by established players. For airlines, Boeing and Airbus represent a safe, established ecosystem with decades of proven performance. The C929, on the other hand, is a higher-risk, potentially lower-cost alternative that could reshape the market if it succeeds. Comac's challenge is clear. It must win trust, not just through aggressive pricing and state-backed support, but by delivering on quality and reliability, starting with a strong domestic launch and gradually convincing the world that it can stand alongside the industry's best. Comac's biggest advantage is its access to China's colossal domestic market, soon to be the world's largest for air travel. State-owned airlines are expected to place large orders for the C929, providing a stable foundation for production and operational experience. The C929 is designed to replace hundreds of aging Airbus A330s in China, ensuring a ready market. This captive market allows Comac to ramp up production and iron out issues away from global scrutiny. The government's support will stimulate the entire domestic aerospace industry, creating jobs and expertise. For airlines, incentives like favorable pricing and financing will make flying Chinese attractive, despite the risks. This domestic springboard gives Comac a credible path to long-term success. Once proven at home, the C929 could become a serious contender abroad. To become a global player, the C929 must clear its biggest hurdle international certification. Without approval from the FAA and ESA, the jet is confined to China and a few allies. Certification is a rigorous, years-long process requiring transparency and trust, especially challenging amid geopolitical tensions. Western regulators will scrutinize every detail, and political pressures will be high. Even with certification, airlines in Europe, the Middle East and North America are conservative, preferring proven aircraft with global support. No major Western airline has ordered a Comac jet yet, and the C929 will face skepticism unless it's significantly cheaper. Winning global trust will be Comac's toughest test.
Comac's rise is a long-term saga, not an overnight disruption. The company's journey has been marked by years of incremental progress, learning from setbacks and steadily building expertise. Each new aircraft model represents not just a technical achievement, but a step forward in China's ambition to become a global aviation powerhouse. Boeing and Airbus still hold the technological and trust advantage, and the C-929 won't win major international orders soon. These established giants have decades of experience, global support networks, and deep relationships with airlines around the world, making it difficult for any newcomer to break through quickly. But dismissing Comac would be a mistake. The company is learning fast, adapting to global standards, and showing a willingness to innovate in areas where others may have grown complacent. Its protected home market, state funding, and drive for self-sufficiency give it a unique path to success. With strong government backing and a massive domestic customer base, Comac can afford to take the long view, investing in research and development that may take years to pay off. By saturating China first, Comac can build scale and credibility. Success at home will allow it to refine its products, improve reliability, and gain the confidence of both passengers and airlines before venturing further abroad. The C929's real impact may be in reshaping the industry, forcing Boeing and Airbus to compete harder, especially in Asia. As Comac grows, it could drive innovation, lower costs, and offer new choices to airlines, changing the competitive landscape in ways that benefit travelers. Comac C's focus on a domestic supply chain could inspire other nations to seek industrial sovereignty, fragmenting the global aerospace market. This shift could lead to more regional players, each developing their own capabilities and reducing reliance on traditional Western suppliers. The journey is just beginning, but China is methodically building a world-class aerospace industry. With each milestone Comac is not just catching up, it's laying the groundwork for future leadership in aviation technology. The C929 may not conquer the world overnight, but it's ending the two-horse race and ushering in a new era of competition in the skies. The future of air travel is being reshaped before our eyes, and Comac is determined to be at the center of that transformation.